My name is Xavier, and welcome to a Let's Try of Railway Empire. I cannot tell you how excited I am to play this game. This is my fourth out of five Let's Tries for this weekend. Uh, for those of you who are new here, I do a whole bunch of these things now. So if you want to see some random games all the time, uh, hit the subscribe button. But you may also be inundated with endless amounts of really long format campaigns, which is the bulk of my videos. Uh, regardless, getting back to Railway Empire here, you guys wouldn't know it, my channel regulars, that is, because I haven't done any Tycoon games on this channel ever. I've done, like, you know, XCOM, RimWorld, all that good stuff, uh, Total War. But Tycoon games are really, like, the origin of my, my gaming history, starting all the way back with the very first one. Was it Railroad Tycoon, I think, was the first actual Tycoon game? Maybe not. Uh, and then I know Transport Tycoon. God, I st for the last, like, 20 years straight, I have had a copy of Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe or the, the predecessor, the actual Transport Tycoon Deluxe. Even Transport Tycoon. I've had a copy installed on whatever computer I've owned for like 20 straight years. 20 years! So this game, I'm going to be comparing it as I play quite a bit to Transport or Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe, which I still to this uh, day play a little bit. And then also my favorite Tycoon game of all time, which is Railroad Tycoon 3. There's a lot of great things about those two games, and I feel like this game could potentially usurp them all. Potentially. I haven't played enough to really find out, but I'm excited to find out as I play through. Speaking of playing through, lots of different things you can do here. We've got sandbox, we got free mode, scenarios, campaign. Uh, I want to start with a campaign, because I feel like that's probably the best way to introduce the game. And then simultaneously... Well, that looked like a face right there in Michigan very briefly when I looked at the core of my eye. But yeah, simultaneously, this way we can build up and you guys can kind of see how the thing plays out. This is a se this is a, a game, rather, that I could make a long series on my channel. I'm not sure if I'm going to or not, because I imagine the Vita account will be much lower since it's totally different from everything else I do. Uh, however, I could easily play this game for, you know, who knows, dozens, hundreds of hours easily already. I've only played it for like maybe about an hour, and I can already tell you I could play a lot, lot, lot more. Uh, but in any event, we're going to come out here and play in the Great Plains, uh, trying to link up the Transcontinental Railroad. And this is one of the things I loved about Transport Tycoon 3, was it was very historic. I learned a lot playing the game, lots of details, lots of fine subtleties. It was really interesting. I felt immersed in the time period and the culture, and I came away like, like I had read a history book or something. So we'll see if this game conveys the same sort of uh, educational experience. But let's get right in. This is something I need to talk about for a minute as well, the pause mode. Now, I, I imagine most people who play this game are just going to look right past this. To me, I saw this pause mode, I clicked through, I saw normal, manual, and trainiac. And I thought to myself, wow, Calypso is insane. Uh, that, by the way, is the developer for this game. They've also made Port Royal 3 and Tropico. Tropico 5, I think, comes out in soon, next spring, maybe. Either way, I plan on playing it when it does. Uh, Port Royal 3, I've played every pirate game I've ever found in my entire life. I think that was my favorite one. Well, no, Sid Meier's Pirates really takes the cake, but Port Royal 3 was a very good uh, tycoon-style pirate game. Anyway, regardless, Glypso's awesome is what I'm trying to say here, because they've already, right off the bat, included modes for, you know, every different kind of player. Like, I love not only playing games with a challenge, but playing them with the added challenge of a time, like a time factor. So I like to play a lot of no-pause games, as those of you who watch my RimWorld series will, of course, know. Uh, and then also FTL, if I ever get around to doing it. And then also Total War, I play no-pause. Basically, no. I just I find the extra additional challenge uh, not encapsulating. I find it um, enjoyable, and some people wouldn't, so you can right off the bat, you can go for whatever kind of pause mode you want. I think this one button here really speaks to how much Calypso cares about their, their game and their player base. But for me, I'm going to go manual. This time around. Normally, I think I would do Trainiac. So, yeah, you, your game never pauses. But because I don't know how to play it that much, I've only played for about an hour, I'm going to go manual. And most of the time, I'll leave the game unpaused. If I do pause it, I get a reduction in score. Not that I really care, but... I am the best choice. Yeah, he sounds just like me. I am indeed the best choice. Let's get in here. Uh, my name is Xavier, as already previously stated. Union Pacific Railroad. And here comes a bit of a cutscene. In 1863, on the banks of the Missouri River, the last chapter in the monumental undertaking of the Transcontinental Railroad began. The workers of the Union Pacific Railroad began laying their tracks westward from Omaha through the wild heart of the North American continent. 
massive challenges awaited them. Away from all civilization, the country was vast, the weather ruthless, and the challenges tremendously energy sapping. But there was a masterstroke of modern engineering to be accomplished, to tame the wilderness and to conquer it with steel, fire, and steam. Never before had anything like this been ventured, but the time was ripe. All right, so a couple things Greetings. to mention. Oh. My name is Thomas Clark Durand. Exactly, the head of Union Pacific. We will go down in history as the ones who created the Transcontinental Railroad. And that, my friend, is your job as chief engineer. I can supervise everything here on site right now, as I have to meet with some politicians in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very busy man. Uh, Thomas Clark. First, you Clark. should familiarize yourself with the basic controls. Move okay, the we'll, we'll just yeah. In all directions. Now okay. test the camera's zoom function. Okay, before I do this, the cutscene reminded me of two things. Number one, Railroad Tycoon Three. The historical element was so much fun uh, that when I first saw the cartoony art style of this game, I really didn't like it. But then it has grown on me. It has grown on me a lot. I think the art, the art's actually pretty good. The game is more about like train. Or more like a more like a tycoon, an actual legitimate tycoon business simulator than it is about you like a super also hard. Oh, the camera. whoops! Give it a try. Yeah, Q &E. Very good. Now you know the basic controls. Your first task is to create a rail connection between Omaha and Norfolk to the northwest. All right, uh, that's not going to be a big issue. I think Both we need. Both cities will need a station for this. You already have a station in Omaha, but you still need to build one in Norfolk. To do this, switch to building construction mode. All right. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to forgo my normal, I'll introduce the game, and I'll let this guy introduce it. Here's the thing, though, right? The, whoa, the cool thing about this... Very good. Now the two stations need to be connected with tracks. To do this, switch to track construction mode. Is that... It's actually a very good tutorial. Like, it's 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 now pretty... Uh, it gets you into it. the stations in Norfolk and Omaha. To do this, select the two station tracks one after the other. Then pay for your track planning. Okay, simple enough. It's going to cost us sixty thousand dollars for one hundred and two miles. If I wanted to, I could add a track point and then kind of rotate it or whatever. But you know what? It's it's probably fine. I could probably make it spell out things. Like I don't know why I'd want to do that, but oh, I can make it do all kinds of wa waxy, wany things for no particularly good reason. But let's just leave that in here and pay. One of the things right off the bat, comparing this to Open Transport Tycoon. Good lord. <laughs> Open Transport Tycoon had, like, a square system, and you could raise or lower every four corners of the map, and then you had to put the track on it, you had to orient the track piece by piece by piece. Most of the game was just laying the track. This is insane. Look how well it works. It just throws in bridges, it throws in tunnels, it gives you a uh, real-time display. Look at this zoopy-doopy thing. It gives you a real-time display on the right. Uh, and then the cool thing is, even if you don't have the money to do it, you can just leave it here and come back to it later and pay for it. It's actually really, really, really intuitive. But I have to say, part of me misses the old, like, difficulty in laying a real track. Felt like I built it myself. But at the same time, 99% of players don't want to mess with, like, raising and lowering the tiles and laying individual squares. So I think this is a much improved system. Now create your first train so that you can set up a rail line between your stations. Initially, your train only exists on paper. It's not much use to you without a locomotive. All right, so we're going to set up a line from Omaha. I'm going to come up here to Norfolk. Beautiful, we've got both of those. Let's hit save. Uh, now we need to add a locomotive. We only have one, the Philadelphia. It looks like it was made in 1863. 31 miles per hour. It costs 49000 to buy, and I think this tractive... Power, 59%. Okay. There we go. We can, now, the cool thing th that is new here that wasn't in Railroad Tycoon uh, 3 is all these personnel. You can engineer, stoker, conductor, and security guard, which is fascinating because they can also have interactions. They can, like, be friendly towards each other or hate each other, make each other, like, better or worse. And, and uh, the micromanaging of having to deal with the Cotters is kind of removed, but if you want to, you can put it in... You can put some of these ones in, like, manually, and you can actually kind of manually control the stuff. It's just Very simplified, good. I think. Now you can see the journey your train will take. If there is something to transport, the train will automatically take it. And here's one of my favorite things. I really love the ride-along. 
I really, really, really love it. Just because, I mean, it doesn't matter right now because I'm just sitting here in the middle of nowhere. How do I move uh, move the camera around? I got to use... Can I, whoa, that's my camera position However, there. As each locomotive needs water, sand, and lubricant on its journey, you have to place a supply tower along the road. Yep, they let me click the whistle, guys. Guess what? A click of the whistle. But no, really, though, how satisfying will it be? How do, how do I move? Oh, the middle mouse button moves the camera. I see. The sensitivity is super high. The, hey, guys. It actually looks pretty cool. I, I really do like the art style. I really did not like it when I first started. And I imagine a lot of you are going to see it and be like, yeah, I don't like that. But, you know, give it, give it a chance. Over time, it definitely grew in me. And by time, I mean like two hours. Um, what was I going to say about this, though? Oh, right. So this is a pretty simple thing, right? We're just we're just cruising along in, in the open field. So what? Not, not really much to look at with the train. But when you get a crazy railroad that goes from, like, New York to San Francisco through, like, the mountains and stuff, and you spend who knows how long working on it, imagine how fun and satisfying it's going to be to just kick back and, like, ride along just that one time. It's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Anyway, we need to do some more building here. So let's go construction. We need to do a supply tower here to refuel our train's oil. Sand and very good water. The train is now traveling between Omaha and Norfolk, but you can do even more. Each city needs goods from the surrounding area. For example, every city needs corn. Okay. Yes, they do. Some corn Look, down there here. There is a corn farm near Omaha. Until now, the corn has made it to the city in the conventional way, but we want to change that. All right, so for those of you who have no idea what a tycoon game is all about, this now one... construct a rural train station in the marked location with a corn farm within its radius. I just take a minute here to go through all this stuff. This one is very deep. It's even it's even a little bit deeper than, you know, Transport Tycoon Deluxe, uh, and, and it has a lot of awesome stuff. Like, you got research here going all the way through the ages. Look at this. This is... Oh, my... I knew there was research. I didn't know there was this much research. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Okay. You got all your company stuff, you can have like competitors, you can invest in, in not just your like your trains and whatnot, you can invest in enemy companies, you can invest in local businesses, you can make industries, and then you can connect those industries to your train empire. You can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then you can like even play the stock market, invest in like corn and whatnot for various years. Uh, there's all kinds of additional tasks up here. Is this the task? Oh, I haven't opened my tasks yet, so they haven't showed them to me, but there's a bunch of different bonus tasks for each scenario. And, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff. Now, games like this generally are massively overwhelming with the amount of information they have, but so far I've found this game does a very good job of presenting everything it needs to present in a fairly intuitive way. It takes about an hour, I think, to get into it. It's still a little bit higher learning curve than probably most games. Well, <laughs> yeah, definitely. All Tycoon games are, though. But once you get into it, it's, it's, it's pretty well set up to give you the information you need from where you need to get it. I'll go over that a little bit later. For now, let's just finish up what this guy wants us to do here. Uh, and then I can start actually playing without him talking and interrupting my every other sentence. So a small train station, great. We're going to rotate this a little bit here with the shift key. So just to orient it for maximum efficiency. You know what? We can put it even closer here. As long as we hit that, we'll get the corn. Now Looks good. connect the new rural train station to the station in Omaha. The rural. Uh, we'll connect from here, like straight up to there. The incline is 0%. That is $22,000. That is super cheap. And Let's go for it. things are getting tricky as we have to deal with a logistical problem. As Norfolk should also enjoy fresh corn, there will soon be two trains traveling on the stretch of track between Omaha and Norfolk. Of course, this will then result in a conflict. Yes, so this is the, the meat and bones of all train Since games. Since trains cannot travel through each other, you'll need a side track between Omaha and Norfolk. This consists of one parallel track and two signals. Yeah, so uh, the last time I played Open Transport First, Tycoon... create a oh. side track. It needs to be at least long enough for a fully loaded train. Anyway, like I was trying to say, the last time I played Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe, I made... I'll th if I can remember, I'll throw... Uh, what is it, 14 minutes in? I'll throw up a picture of it on the screen for a minute here. I made one station that serviced 89 modern maglev trains in real time with zero, zero slowdown. Not one second of pause for any train at any point. That took me who knows how many dozens of hours, but God was it so fun to watch it when it was all said and done. I cannot wait to do something similar in this game, although I don't know if you can probably do anything that complex, but regardless, uh, first we need to make a sidetrack here. Am I in the track production? Yes, I am. Uh, let's start. Oh wait, no, I wasn't, and then I got out of it. 
Let's start throwing up like a little bit. I do love the way that the track's like very intuitive here. Okay, right there. We'll do this. We'll come all the way down here according to this. Looks good. That's actually a really long, really long side track, but okay, we'll throw it in. Uh, then Excellent. we'll buy it. However, your trains won't necessarily use the sidetrack as they generally always take the shortest route. For this reason, you also have to specify the direction of travel on each parallel track. Yeah, so we're going to throw in some lights here or some uh, signals. Now open building construction mode and set up a signal in the highlighted area pointing in the direction of the switch. Trains there we go. will then be able to stop here when the single track is in use. Or does it does it does the tutorial want me to uh, rotate this one? Shift left button, change signal. No, that's not right. Uh, change signal direction now left. Now make sure there we that go. the track can only be traveled in one direction. For this purpose, set the signal so the trains coming from the opposite direction cannot pass. Excellent. So, there we go. Now do the same on the parallel track so that each parallel track has a different direction. Place Six. a second signal in the highlighted area and block the track to trains coming from the opposite direction. Very good. I'm sure that it wasn't at all easy. Yes, it you was. You will soon come to realize <laughs> that signals are an important aid in guaranteeing smooth rail operations. You will find more information and tips under Hints and Tips. Okay. You have anything else to say to me, or can I talk for a minute here? I need to know. Okay, I think I do have a minute here. He's going to soon say, go do all the tasks. Yeah, he's going to say, go do this. Now assemble yeah. a new train and give it a locomotive and a rail line. Your new rail line should run via Omaha to Norfolk so that the people of Norfolk can be supplied with corn. All right, so here's what I wanted to say about this. You can do so many cool things with tracks. Obviously, laying one track is the most efficient way, or not the most efficient, the most cost, the lowest cost way to do it. The most efficient way would be two tracks, like every train gets its own track to go back and forth on un unhindered. But cost-wise, that's just not, it's just not really possible. So you can do side things here, you can do all kinds of like stops, you can do junctions, you can do multiple tracks. It gets really awesome when you have like trains going from all over the place, you have big hub cities where trains are flowing in and out from various locations at various times and intervals. Uh, and then, I don't know, that sort of optimization and efficiency management is the funnest thing ever for me! It's so much fun and I imagine it's pretty much fun for pretty much everyone who plays these games because a signal management has long since been a staple of any railroad game. Uh, that being said, we need to make a new train here. Is this what this guy wants us to do? Yes, he does. Set up a rail line. We need to go from, I think it was Evans Farm, uh, to Omaha, to Norfolk. Beautiful. Let us save that. Let's add the locomotive. We only have the one. Excellent. We'll buy it. The corn farm will automatically make use of your train because the cities along your rail line are demanding corn. Conventional transportation is much more costly for the farm. I think we can actually see that by looking at the flow of goods We're here. We're still missing something. Or maybe not yet. Locomotives wear out over time and need to be regularly maintained so they can perform their duties more reliably. For this purpose, there needs to be at least one maintenance building on each rail line where locomotives can be serviced if necessary. All right. So we'll throw that in, then I'll go talk about like the uh, the resource. Construct such a maintenance building at your station in Omaha now. To do this, select the station itself and expand the station with this building. Come on, guys. Let me click it. Let me click it. There it is. Uh, and over here, construct maintenance building. Voila. 80,000. Right. We've there it is. We've been for long enough. I need to return to Washington for further miserable negotiations with our representatives of the people. Uh, I've written a task list for you. Take a look at it and complete the tasks within the given time period. Do not disappoint me. I don't know if there's one thing I never fail to disappoint. Uh, it's in providing an endless, endless amount of lollygagging for everyone's amusement. That is for sure. God, I should start using that word a lot more. Surprisingly, I use it more than never, though, interestingly enough. But here's our task list. And we want to do all of these things. Before 1864, it's April 16th, 1863 now. So we have like eight months to get that on the road. Or maybe like seven and a half months. We need to connect Omaha and North Platte, and then we need to connect Omaha and Cheyenne. And then they want us to do all these optional tasks. And then, of course, we have all these uh, end tasks at the end here before 1867, 1868. So I got plenty of time now to go talk about a various 
various number of mechanics and whatnot, uninterrupted at long last. So the cool thing here is a flow of goods, I can click on any watch or any which good I want. Like, let's say I want to see corn. Where is it going? What's it doing? So on the on the entire world map here, if I look around with the corn selected, it's showing me, okay, here's the corn. It's being produced there. It's moving over here. It's being produced at like 1.6. I think that's per week. And I think they currently have a stockpile of 16. And the, no, like, everything is, is transported by trucks, essentially, naturally. And so if I were to click on, say, like Omaha here, can I get out of this first? Okay, no, I want to shut that down. Let's click on Omaha. Yeah, you can see here, like, by default, all the passengers are being transported by coach. Okay, not trucks. They don't have trucks. It's like 1830. Uh, and over here, the mail is being transported by coach. 0% of it's being transported by train. Ideally, I want to pull up, you know, close to 100% by train because that's good for me. Like, I'm doing the train stuff. I'm not in the coach uh, business. But that being said, uh, back over here on the flow of goods, you can see that this corn is moving to these three locations. So I can expedite that by building trains there and moving the corn out to those, lo those locations. And you can even see how much they want. Like, Omaha wants 0.2 corn, or they're eating... 0.2 corn per week and over here Norfolk's eating 0.4 so depending on uh, how I want to set up my trains I could do like one train on a big loop that goes all over the place delivering corn everywhere I could do like multiple trains I could do like little hip hops and skips and jumps many 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 things and then also if you guys aren't familiar this is a common staple for most uh, tycoon games you can process goods so Omaha I keep hitting escape to get out of this. I gotta click on train list, I guess. Omaha has, has meat industry, so if I bring them cattle, they'll process it into meat and then uh, leather, and then I can bring that meat and leather to other cities. And the more stuff you bring to places, the more they grow, the bigger they get, the more passengers and mail they produce. So there's different strategies. You could actually have a strategy of just building up one city to a mega city, and then kind of branching out and taking control. And this is really cool when there's, when there's opponents as well. Because you can kind of fight and vie for control of like who has the goods from what city, and, and you might want to like one guy might want to just deliver rural resources to various places and own one industry. Someone else might want to go and build up a huge city over there. And then the the real fun stuff comes when you have like multiple opponents fighting for control of one city. Oh, dude, that that is just the funnest stuff uh, for me anyway. But regardless, I need to take a look at my task list here. Let's get them done. Connect Omaha and North of Platts. So we're already down here with Omaha. Where the heck is North Platte? It's right over here. All right. Well, looks to me that probably I have two options. I can either go through Norfolk or I can make a whole new line here uh, going through all these locations. And I actually think I want to make a new line just to showcase a couple of things. Number one, there's a small strange uh, train station, right? Let's upgrade it, expand the station. It's going to cost 60000 but we now have two tracks rather than one, which is really cool. Uh, and then I... Oh, it also loads and unloads a little bit faster. Now, in Open Transport Tycoon... You couldn't just, like, in this game, you could just throw a, a, a train station down right in the middle of the town, and the town will magically reform around it, which is, you know, it's, it's convenient. But in Open Transport Tycoon, you literally had to bulldoze buildings if you wanted to build there, and it really, really forced you to not play super optimally, which was a lot of fun, honestly. Although, also, kind of micromanagey and not really all that great. Like, if you bulldoze too many buildings, the town council would be like, nope, you can't build the bulldoze anymore. We won't allow it. And then you just, like, sit in there waiting for, like, five years, blowing tons of money trying to bribe them or whatever into letting you bulldoze another building. I don't know. I kind of liked that micromanaging nonsense. Uh, however, I'm not really sad to see it go. Uh, regardless, let's throw in a train over here, or a track here anyway. You know what? I don't necessarily need... Do I need this cattle? Well, I could bring the cattle here to North... Oh, you know what? Let's let's do, like, a whole little empire here just for the heck of it, right? I know it's the tutorial. I don't need to do these things. I'm going to do them anyway. Let's uh, Let's get one down here. We'll, we'll hit up this cattle farm. I like that a lot. Uh, we can also hit up... What is this here? What kind of station is this? I'm not really sure. This is a little bit new to me. Can I get out of this? And maybe it will tell me if I click on it. Johnson Fattening. Johnson Fattening. All right. They're producing milk. 28. 28 milk plus 1.6 per week. And those are being transported 100% by coach. Now, let's go take a look at this. Like, let's say North Platte. What kind of... Uh, what does North Platte actually want here for milk if I go to their resources? City demands for goods. Do they want... They don't even want milk. You need 40,000 citizens to want milk. The bigger the city gets, the more kind of advanced resources it needs. So this city is so small that they're, they have a bunch of cows. They're producing their own milk. They have no demand for cattle because they have no industry. No demand for milk. Their five farmers are fine with their five cows. 
Once they get bigger, though, they will need to import milk and all that cool stuff. So, and you can see how you can even build these industries yourself if you wanted to try to, it's like, I was going to say steam line or steam roll something uh, into an area where it otherwise isn't already there. Kind of like force an industry and grow around it, which is really interesting. But regardless, let's get in here for tracks. Let's just connect these things. I think I'm going to come out of the north is fine. Actually, if I come right here, hold on, let me zoom in a little bit. That's looking like the... But let's 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 cancel that for a second. Why don't I try instead of that? Let's let's try uh, coming over here on this one, because I think there's a lot of grading going on. Yeah, that is. I didn't realize I would I would be going so far uphill here. So it, when you go uphill on trains, it just takes a lot of effort. But this is okay. It's a zero percent. It just has to go around this big kind of. Not really a mountain, barely looks like anything, but it is kind of an incline, so we'll do that. I think that's pretty good. We'll pay for this. I don't think we need the milk anywhere, because I don't think any of our towns... Maybe Norfolk is big enough that it might want milk. It's size 2. Nope, inhabitants 23,000. So we're going to bypass the milk completely. We probably will hit up the corn, and then we'll hit up North Platte. So let's go throw in a couple more uh, train stations down here. Now, I think the train stations are better being in the middle of the city. Whereas when you're building on the rural resources, they have to be on the outside because they can't, they can't, you can't bulldoze the farmhouse. Uh, but in this case, the city warps around it, and I think all the people in the city, like if I were to go here, I'd only be getting the population of like two thirds of the city. I think that's how it used to work in Open Transport Tycoon, anyway. So I'm just gonna throw the thing right in the middle. There we go. You can see the city kind of reformed around it. And do I want to even stop at this corn? I mean, I have some down here, so I, I don't particularly need to. No. Just put in a, a regular old track here. Regular old track. We'll go from North Platte. Where the heck is this? There we go. Track. And we'll connect it pretty much direct to Lee Breeding. That is going to cost us quite a bit, and it's not quite going to work. So I'm going to have to move these things around, right? Let's pull this out here so we're not bulldozing the milk guy. Let's Pull this up, Peter, so we're not bulldozing the corn guy. Wonderful. There we go. We're looking at 109,000 out of 224. Uh, let us Good. pay and build. That's finished. You are making progress. Sure am. No one better for the job, friend. Uh, now we got a huge bonus for doing that. And in addition, I need to set up some. Ooh, ooh, the newspaper, the timely report. 100th Meridian Cross, transcontinental. No longer a dream. That's right, because we just built our railroad over the 100th Meridian. Cool. In the last few days, laborers from the Union Pacific Railroad have crossed the 100th Meridian with their tracks. This is the first milestone. Union Pacific has now ensured the right to forge ahead with the line through the heart of the continent. That sounds so exciting. They also have some cool, like, off-kilter uh, off comedy down here sometimes. Recommended cod oil. Scott's emulsion made from pure cod liver oil is almost as tasty as milk. It contains much more stimulating hypophosphite. The oil helps with in, what? Anemia, fatigue, cough, sore throats, and colds of all kind. Available in all pharmacies. Baking soda bucks. Huh. Interesting. These are just like, okay, some, I guess they're not always uh, comedy things. Sometimes they're just like interesting news. But it gets you into the, the feel of things. Into the feel of things for the their, their accurate time period-wise, I believe. But anyway, we need to come over here and we need to definitely set up something that's going to drive these cattle over here from... From what is this? Lee Breeding? So let's set up a whole new train. Set up the rail line. I'm going to start in Lee, Lee Breeding. We're going to take that cattle and we're going to deliver it over here in Omaha, right? Uh, then we're probably going to come all the heck the way back here. Oh, or do I even want to do that? I mean, I only needed to connect. Yeah, I guess I can do it. I suppose I could do this. We'll just come all the way back there. Great. All three of you guys connect. Uh, let's now add a locomotive for it. We'll add the same one as before, and we'll just call it a day. Ooh, unrest in New York. <gasps> is this like the, the Gangs of New York thing? Following a new troop conscriptions, unrest has broken out amongst the immigrants in New York. Due to the option of being released from the military service for a payment of $300, the accusation is that this is a rich man's war and a poor man's fight. Officials are, however, optimistic that this unrest will soon die down. Huh. Interesting. What a weird thing humanity was back in the 1800s. It's just strange, strange, strange indeed. Uh, now, is this going to be alright? Yeah, we can come in here. This is its own separate track. How is this train doing? It's fully loaded up here on cattle. And we're going to deliver it over here. What's our other objectives? Oh, there's tons of cool trip or tips, rather. Tips and tricks. 
And I didn't really read through them all yet. I will eventually, but I, one of them that I really like was signals. They kind of show you visually how they work, which is interesting. Because signals are always one of those things, like every time I go to play Opa Transport Tycoon, I got to go watch another tutorial to remember how they work. They're so complicated. But once you figure it out, they're so powerful. Uh, but regardless, we had a lot of tooltips on the map. I'm mostly ignoring all of these right now. Uh, and, and indeed, let's go click on a few of them. Build a rural train station. Now, this is actually physically showing you how to build. This is what I was saying. Like, the tutorials are really cool. And all, like, the pop-ups, they really get you into this otherwise super complex game. I love it. I think it's got a very approachable tycoon game, as far as I've seen so far. Demand for the imported goods meat has been reduced as the maximum stock level has been reached. Okay. Well... That makes some sense. They've just had the full meat and we haven't really done anything. We're delivering cattle here and we're not bringing this meat anywhere. Uh, however, we may be able to do something about that if we were to connect Omaha with some more trains here. How's this little guy doing? The Omaha in Norfolk. He's coming back with two passengers and one male. And frankly, they're not doing like super well either. What is this going on down here? Oh, did I ever build my station? Yes, I did. So they're getting refueled there. You can see this train isn't moving because at present there's another train down here occupying the tracks. So until this one leaves, this section of track, or until this one leaves and gets up here and cuts through, this section of track is like uh, monopolized by this train. So this one's just sitting here doing nothing. So if I were to make another one of these pass-throughs down here, I could have gotten my train a lot closer, and it could already be in there right now unloading. And that would be a lot more efficient than what I'm doing. But regardless, let's go uh, hit up the next the next task. Connect Omaha and Cheyenne. All right, got to do that within the next, like, five months or so. Five and a half months. Where is Cheyenne exactly? Oh, right over here. Actually, it's just straight past, past North Platte. All right. We can do that, no problem. So let's go throw in a construction small train station. Where the heck is the music, guys? Where's the music? Like, one of the best things about these games is the music. I can listen to Open Transport Tycoons. I used to just open the game and listen to the music. Non-stop. Game hints, newspaper tooltips. It's just not playing. Oh, there we go. Sound. Music. 60%. Audio on. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll come in. Maybe I'm just taking too long and the game's like... Is he still alive? Why bother playing music? <laughs> anyway, we'll connect direct from Cheyenne. Look at all these resources here. I'm not even sure what these are. It looks like maybe copper. Is this salt? No idea. Maybe it's clay. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the resources are in this game. We'll connect up here. Oh, there's the music. Isn't this fun? God, I love just listening to music. I feel like I'm in the I'm in the I'm in the time period. Let's let's swing this down a little bit here. You can see as I'm doing it, the grading, like the the digging out, is changing a little bit, just a little bit. God, two percent. That's 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 even worse. Okay, I'm not I'm not really doing myself any favors here, trying to maximize the, this this train. Root. Wow, that one's pretty bad here. Let's go like that. All right, $137. That's okay, I suppose. I might have been able to do a little bit better. I got some plateaus down here as well. Supposedly, you can rotate the camera around, but I'm not 100% sure how to do that yet. Okay, task Those completed. politicians in Washington get on one's nerves. But now let's get back to your tasks. As you can see, Cheyenne is still a little town hoping for an upswing caused by the railroad connection, but a city will only attract new inhabitants if it is supplied with enough goods. Yes, so what they want us to do here is Cities bring them a whole bunch of goods. basic goods from the surrounding area. If you construct stations in the right places and establish rail lines, your trains will be used to transport goods and you will make profits for transportation. But for this, you have to know what goods a city actually needs. All right. Is it going to show me uh, more tutorials? Come on, friend. You can Quick. find out any city's current needs. Now select Cheyenne and view the city's demand for goods. As you can see, Cheyenne currently needs only a handful of goods, and you can only deliver goods that are in demand. As the city grows, it will demand further goods. At the moment, you can supply grain and wood. Both of these goods are available to the north of Cheyenne. Yes, they are right up there. So here's the plan. Let's go connect them up, shall we? Connect Cheyenne to a timber business and a wheat farm and establish a new rail line that connects them both to Cheyenne. So the cool thing here is uh, the bigger station have bigger radiuses, so I can hit both of these if I place it just right. Looks like right there. Let us rotate that building so it's angled towards Cheyenne. We're going to have four tracks, which is more than we need. 
I mean, I, the other cool thing about this is it really kind of depends on what you're doing. I have tons of money. This is just the first part of the campaign. Not a big deal. So I'm building a large train station, but it, in, in a much more challenging scenario. And that's why I really like Railroad Tycoon 3 a lot, because the, the scenarios were indeed a challenging. At least I remember them being challenging. But yeah, I would have probably have built a couple small train stations and hooked them up in a much more efficient manner. But for right now, I'm just blowing through the money. Uh, we'll do any old track, doesn't really matter so much right now. And that's, you know what, actually, let's come down here to Cheyenne and make this a little bit more efficient. Hold on, get out of that. Let's, let's get out of that for a second. Click over here. Can we upgrade this? Expand station. Yeah, that's not even that much money. We'll do it. Great, now we have two tracks. Ah, this here I need to negotiate a little bit. Set the switch point. How do I actually do this? There's, there's a way to do this for sure, right? So, track construction. Can I, uh, can I do something like this, and then right here? I know there's a way to do this. Oh, bulldoze. I want to bulldoze. Shift, left click, set so section of track. So let's do, like, here. And then right there, left click to remove. Beautiful. And then I can come back in here, uh, and we can reconnect there to... What the heck? That's not what I wanted to do. Track construction. There to here. I said that's a little bit awkward, but you know what? We'll buy it. I think I may, may, may have screwed that up a little bit. Let's get rid of this. There we go. It's a little little ziggy zaggy. I'll get, I'll get used to the controls as I play a little bit more. But regardless, this now opens us up to do something very efficient like this. We'll just slam that right in there. What is that? Uh, we're looking at hundred thousand dollars for this. I don't think we can make it too much better than that. We are building like a bit of an incline here and a bridge. I wonder if we can avoid that by just kind of whacking it over there yes now it's 50 58 000. okay so now we're cutting through instead of making bridges bridges a little bit more money let's go for that beautiful now uh, let's get one more train going up here new train let's set up rail line from cook chopping uh, right on down here to cheyenne beautiful let us continue we'll add a locomotive the only one we can buy right now and we'll call well it a day done. the city will soon grow you can see how well it is being supplied at any time in the city dialogue Basically, a city will grow once its demands are sufficiently met. I think you have learned enough. Complete the rest of your tasks. All right. Now, I'm just free to do whatever I damn well please until we're done with this first campaign scenario. What do we got down here? Building city stations in the, uh, in the center to attract as many passengers as possible. So it is just like open transport tycoon deluxe in that regard. Build the train station as close as possible to industries to reduce loading times. Oh, I didn't realize that. Closer to the industries reduces loading times. Okay, we'll get rid of that tooltip. I got 400 other tooltips here, right? Let's go take a look at them and see what they all say. The following applies to all train stations. The larger the station, the shorter the loading and unloading times will be, and the more rail tracks will be available. Okay. Uh, I already watched this video down here on building the stations. Let's come up here. Production of leather has been reduced as the maximum stock level has been reached. Right? I need to m get rid of this meat and this leather. We need to start pushing it out to different places that want it. Probably Norfolk. Well, I guess we do have one train bringing that stuff up here. Build a city station. City station have to be built near the city center. All buildings can be rotated before placing. Yeah, we've already seen that, so we can get rid of that. Uh, the better a city is supplied with goods by rail, the faster it gro grows. Select the city dialogue and learn more about its requirements. If they are over 60%, the city can grow. So I click on this one. Fulfillment of demand, 59%. Okay, very, very, very close. Also, we have a brewery here, a privately owned brewery. Interesting. Now, we could, this is, we could buy this brewery if we wanted to. It's very possible. We can see when it was first made, its purchase price, profit last week, total profit. We could buy it on the, you know, and then we could start supplying it and actually turning, you know, we could be double dipping, as they say, on the profits. So instead of just delivering wheat and having them make the profits, we could make those profits. And then also, I get the profits for delivering the wheat and then also bring the beer someplace else. But that's how that works. Production of beer has been reduced as the maximum stock level has been reached. All right, yeah. That's all just sitting there doing nothing. The better a city is supplied with goods by rail, the faster it grows. Yeah, we already saw that one. And demand for imported goods cattle has been reduced as the maximum stock level has been reached. Okay. I didn't realize they needed cattle at all, regardless. But uh, all this being said, lee breeding to North Platte is not doing very m well here. What is the deal with this one? First of all... It's supposed to be going to Omaha and then back. Do I not have that set up in a very efficient way? Set up the rail lane. It's going from... Yeah. 
because it's going to Omaha. Then it's bringing those goods from Omaha all the way back here. That's not very efficient. What I might want to do, which would be potentially a lot more efficient, uh, is bring the goods directly from Omaha to Nordfolk down to North Platte. So you know what? That being the case, let's get rid of North Platte here. We'll just delete the station. And you can do cool stuff in here too, like Lee Breeding would be like, all right, use track two on like uh, as your preference. Uh, prioritize loading the cattle or whatever. Don't leave until you have at least four million of this and that. So these are kind of the, the details I used to really get into in Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe. And they're simplified here, but they're still probably mostly approachable and they're not removed, which is I very much appreciate because I enjoyed that aspect of m optimizing every little thing. And it's always cool of, uh, to contrast between do you want to optimize your currently ongoing routes, maybe a little bit later when you've got faster stations or faster trains, or do you want to go make new ones, like what's a better way to increase profit, or really just what do you have fun doing? Well, I don't know. It all kind of comes down to every individual player, I suppose. Anyway, we need to deliver a bunch of stuff to Denver and Cheyenne. Deliver 16 loads of cattle to Denver. All right. Uh, what is this? Locomotive slow due to missing equipment. What equipment are we missing? Locomotive slowed due to missing equipment here. I'm not sure what that means. Missing equipment. Are they low on resources? Can we take a look here? Okay, so that's the train list. Look at my slow due to missing. Oh, oh, I haven't built any supply. Ah, now I know what it's telling me. I haven't built, uh, I completely forgot about uh, supply towers along the road. On the long treks and whatnot, our trains really need to be supplied. We have one up there. We don't have one up here. Let's throw one in kind of on the road here in case they need it. And then while I'm thinking about it, you know what? Let's throw one right on here in the middle of all this as well. Beautiful. That'll, that's what that's all about. Okay. I got it figging. I got it figured out. Figging. I got it figging. <laughs> that's my new my new uh, statement for figured out, apparently. Anyway, let's go figure out where Denver is. So North Platte's out there. Cheyenne, quick shopping. Denver should be somewhere around here. Ah, there it is. Denver. All right. So our task order is such. Deliver 16 loads of cattle to Denver, 16 loads of meat to Cheyenne. Well, that sounds easy enough. Where's the nearest cattle? Over here. We could bring a train from here to Denver, another one up there to Cheyenne. And we could just go cattle to there, or there to there, or we're done. All right. And we can also, if we wanted to, grab some, what is this, sugar? Interesting. Now, do these guys, does Denver want sugar? Let's go find out if they want this. This kind of depends on whether or not I want to build my big station or a little one. The answer is no. They need 30,000 people, so we don't care about that for now. Uh, that being the case, let's do a little small station out here. I'll buy this cattle farm. I can always upgrade it later, so that it might overlap the sugar, but let's do something like this, and then I'll rotate it maybe up like that. That looks good. And then we'll throw in the tracks here. We'll start in Kelly Ranch, friends, from Kelly Ranch. Oh, wait, I didn't throw in the, the station over here. Whoops, whoopsie daisy. Uh, let's throw this a whole different direction because I want to have this go. I want them to come in from the south on Kelly Ranch and then go up to the north to Cheyenne. So we'll throw it in just like that. Beautiful. Imagine how wonky and messy and sloppy it's going to get with, like, tons of competitors, with, like, tons of rails. You're going to have to do the weirdest stuff, like build bridges over your competitors' farms and whatnot. Uh, I love stuff like that. This is pretty much what I want to do. Let's see if we can pull this up a little bit like that. That looks pretty good. 91,000, I got 460. Sure, let's hit a buy. So that's the first step of the journey. The next step of the journey, Cheyenne, are you upgraded to level 2? You actually are. Okay. So if I want to, I could just connect up another... Whoa! Union Pacific Railroad extends network. Nine stations. Trains without tracks. The Battle Colossus of Hell. Okay, all kinds of interesting stuff, but I'm not going to read every one of them. Uh, just because some people are probably here for, like, information rather than role-playing for this particular episode. Maybe I'll do it in the future, though. I would get super into that if I was doing it later. But let's come from Denver here. And I think I'm actually going to come up... Uh, let's come up to the one on the right, like right there. It looks good. Uh, I also noticed right here that we're out of resources. We need a supply tower somewhere on this line, so we'll toss it right there in the middle. And let's go back to the tracks. Now, I forgot to buy them, but they're still here. It's still laid in, so that's really cool. I can just buy it. Bam. That's all connected. And then from this part over here, I think what I want to do is new train. We'll set up a rail line from Kelly Ranch to Denver. 
And then we'll go up to Cheyenne, just like that. And then we'll swing back over there. And then let's hit go. Add a locomotive. You. Good. Uh, set sail, friend. So you're going to bring the cattle over here. Whoop. Union Pacific Railroad increases route length over 1,110 mile long track. That's a lot of miles. But anyway, they're going to bring the cattle from there over here to Denver, where there is a meat industry. It'll then get chopped up, and then the train should take that stuff immediately up to Cheyenne. And then on the way back from Cheyenne, they'll probably bring some passengers or some beer or whatnot, drop it off at Denver, come back over here, uh, pick up their cattle, and then repeat. Not a bad little... Uh, little setup here but one thing i probably want to do is put some lights on this to make it more efficient because we have two trains sharing this track right here or this station and i think what i want to do is make sure that i have some signals on either side because if i don't do that the train won't be able to leave denver until this entire thing is completely unoccupied like let's say a train leaves north platte coming towards a cheyenne over here this station, this train would be stuck in Denver until it actually came all the way over, stopped, docked, turned around, and left. Then the train could leave from Denver. So, in order to make that slightly more efficient and have the train traveling a larger majority of the time, let's come in here and throw down some signals. We'll put like a stop signal right. Is that the right size? I can't really see. Change signal direction. Shift. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, so this means I have, I have a. Temporary stop there. This is not a one-way signal, by the way. I don't think I explained signals earlier. I, I might have got interrupted by the, the tutorial guy and forgot about it. But regardless, so this means the train could come up here. It'll stop right there. Uh, and then we'll do something similar here on the other side. Uh, so now the train over here can walk all the way up there and stop right there. And then worst case scenario, we have a train right here waiting for this track. Uh, while another train's in it, and then the second they leave, they they can fly in there. Alternatively, I could have just upgraded Cheyenne to have more tracks, but again, uh, you know, it's all about efficiency. I don't need to be efficient right now, but in the future, stuff like this is going to be a sticking point. Like, do I use signals and have a little bit less efficiency, or do I just expand the station, or can I expand the station? Is there a competitor station? Uh, that, that's an interesting point, because... The city warps around your track. Like, what if there's a competitor station here as well? Can I, Will that prevent me from upgrading my station all the way to the max size? That was a huge issue in Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe. And you kind of had to plan ahead sometimes and purchase the land, it, just knowing that in the future you were going to do stuff, and you'd kind of buy certain lots so the town couldn't grow into those areas. But again, I don't think that many people would have liked that entire aspect of that game. Speaking of that, let's come down here. Let's throw some supply towers. I keep forgetting to put these in. We'll toss one in here. In case you guys need... I don't know how often you need these things. I'm just going to throw them kind of in the middle of every major major thing here. And hopefully that's good enough. Let's get back out of the menu. Great. Uh, and that's... You know what You know what I want to do? Just for a minute, I want to come ride on this Denver to Cheyenne Express. I just want to look around. That's all. Let me uh, toggle the camera position. Move the camera. Whistle. That's so fun. There we go. I can, I can ride in the nose. Ah, I can look backwards, I can look on the right, and I can look on the left. It is kind of nice. It's seen it. A little cartoony, but I, I, it's grown on me. I like it a lot. You just experience the countryside every once in a while. Fun times. Super fun times. I mean, for people who like this kind of stuff. For everyone else, well, why the hell are you still watching this video? Uh, in any event, ooh, here's my... Uh... Oh, no, never mind. Oh, whoopsie days. Let's, let's get some of this stuff off the screen here. I was going to say, this train is actually blocking the track, but it's not. That's the train from the north up there going on a totally different track. So both of these guys can come in. So yeah, uh, my old Transport Tycoon Deluxe, like, super row row, roll in, roll out station, serviced 89 maglevs, like, flying in from every direction simultaneously with zero seconds of slowdown. Imagine that, because right now this track is blocked. Nothing can come in this track. 89 trains, like, all going in and out of it at the same time. It was incredible. Absolutely incredible. That was so much fun. I can't wait to do cool, really complex stuff like that in the future. But speaking of complex stuff, what's our task? We are delivering the loads of cattle to Denver. We're delivering the meat to Cheyenne. That'll get done automatically. We are automatically connecting people to our network, especially because as they're growing, we're getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so I probably don't need to worry about this one so much. I guess I could connect... Oh, no, I have to connect Omaha and Rock Springs. Okay, where's Rock Springs? Casper. Uh, where are you, Rock Springs? Ah, you're way out there. Okay. 
So to connect Omaha out there, I'm probably gonna have to come through this little cubby here. It looks like the only legitimate path is right through here. So you know what? Let's just do that right now. I can get a whole bunch of money for finishing this. So we'll Rock Springs right in the middle, beautiful. And then you know what I might do here? No, I don't think I need to do it. I can I can use the same track. So let's just lay one in here. God, the music though, I love it. I love it. I wanna put on like a conductor's cap and stream. It'd be amazing. Now, I can, if I wanted to, I could set the track point here, uh, but I'm not going to do that right away. I'm just going to throw it in here first. It makes a completely straight line, and then I can move it around later. So, let's, yeah, how much money was that? One million dollars, friends, to go right through the mountains building. Whoa! Three million dollars to build that, like, mile-high bridge through the mountains. What? Let me zoom in here and just show you guys how asinine this is. Three million dollars. That is some cool stuff. All right, let's let's uh, let's do this a little bit manually here, though, right? So we'll do this. This is actually good if I wanted to. I think this is cotton. Looks like cotton. So if I wanted to pick that up later, I could. Uh, let's pull this up here for sure. We just kind of skirt around there. How's our incline doing? Zero, zero, zero. We're coming right through here. What is this? Bricks? Clay, maybe? Right up there. Beautiful. This is now 127,000. Not 3 million. Let's now do it. Now you've managed to Bam. cross the Great Plains. A masterpiece. Yes, well, it was actually very simple, but you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. So far, the difficulty is very easy, but hey, it is the first mission. I, I do in well, 50 minutes I've been playing this game? Well, it feels like I've been playing for five. I'll tell you that much. So right off the bat, I like it. I like it a lot. I'll say that. Let's uh, see what the rest of the tasks are here. Reach a population of 30,000. Well, we can probably d supply more stuff to Cheyenne. What's this? Transport 100 passengers from Cheyenne to Rock Springs. Okay. That's something we can do uh, that will help them grow a little bit, I think. Does that help them grow, or is it just uh, supplying their needs of the resources they want? So that's a good question. I think it's just the resources. It used to be in Open Transport Tycoon that just bringing people back and forth generated the, like commerce in general, and that helped them to grow as well. But I don't know. Let's. Oh, wait. I didn't mean to throw a signal down there. I meant to put a, a supply thing there. Right? Change signal direction. Control. Left click. The UI is just... It's really intuitive. Whenever I'm... I'm not like sitting... It's not XCOM. I'll tell you that much. I'm not like, what the hell does this thing do? I gotta go to Reddit and look for it to figure it out. No, it, it's all it's all in here. It's simple. It's clean. Every time you go to do something, all the options are shown on the screen. It's great. You can just manage your empire without having to screw around with knowing really how to manage it. Look at these little shanty towns. I want to get in that cart and just ride around. The one thing I really want to be able to do is left click on the cart and just ride along in the cart and, and stand behind the guy and then like have a little bell I can ding as well. I mean, I mean, why not, right? They, they added it for the trains. Uh, in any event, speaking of adding trains, let's go add a new train here. I'm having way too much fun with this tutorial. I know everyone else who's made videos on this so far made like a 30 minute episode where they did this, but I'm just enjoying it, so I, I, I just want to play through it and have some fun. So we're gonna go from oh, yes. shine. One more thing. What? Your company has also a research department to help you unlock new locomotives and other innovations. Open the research dialog to find out more about it. All right, I'll be doing that in just a second. So let's go from Cheyenne here to Rock Springs as we were asked. Let's add a locomotive. We only got the one right now. We'll buy it on up. Looking good. That should take care of most of those things. What does Cheyenne need? I'll look at that research in a minute here. We're going to look up here on information. It looks like their weekly demand is 1.2 for grain, and they currently have in stock 12. We're, we're delivering that. Uh, they have a demand for 0.4 corn. They're getting none. They have demand for 0.4 wood. They have plenty. They have demand for meat. They're getting it. Demand for beer. It looks like they've got plenty. I think they're actually making beer now that I think about it. Yeah, they do make the beer, so they got plenty of that as well. And the only thing we can really do here to help them grow is deliver them corn. And you can even see right here, just looking at, look at, it's going up right now in the inhabitants, 24952, 25019. You can even see, like, right here while you're in the management window, you can see the trains moving in and out. That is so cool. What a nice little UI feature they added. That is so really cool. It's like a real-time view of your station while you're also looking at all this overlay UI, which prevent, presents so much information. But yeah, we could deliver corn here, potentially, to help it grow a little bit faster. Not sure. There is corn down here. I could hit up. This would be complicated, though, because if I were to build a little station down here and connect it to this, I'd have to do a couple bypasses. Do I need to, is the question. I think, honestly, at this point, I can literally just run the game and we'll win. And we'll connect every single objective. 
It's only 1964. Yeah, we'll, we'll easily succeed at everything if I do nothing. So I could either just speed the game up or um, or I could just have some fun with it. So either way, let's come up here, here for some you will research. Find the advances that can be achieved in the current era. Advances from previous eras are usually already active, but what the future holds, we do not know. Well, technically, I know the future holds all of these things right here, like the decapod. <laughs> For each advance, you require innovation points, which you get automatically each month, and which can be increased in various ways. Now, take a look around here, and then unlock an innovation of your choosing. How about a new locomotive? All right, so I've got 280 innovation points. Per month, I'm gaining 40. Uh, these things are going to cost 300. I can't afford. I can't afford, like, anything, according to Detonator. Provides additional safety for subsequent trains, increasing reliability. Huh, okay. Cheyenne will flourish, thanks to you. And for each mile of track that we lay, we receive 10 square miles of land. The politicians have no idea of the value of the assets they are giving away. But that stays between us. Hmm, yes. So I can uh, I can research these things down here. Dining car. Finally, travelers can now use well-equipped onboard restaurant during longer journeys. Such luxury allows the use of dining car on trains and thereby increases ticket revenue by 20%. Mail car. Similar idea. Refrigerator. Similar concepts, but this is for food. Uh, lots of interesting... I could also unlock a new train. The number 51 Dragon. Ooh, a caboose. Allows the use of a caboose on trains and thereby increases bonuses for all employees by 20%. Interesting. We could we can't unlock this one here, the Renaissance, because we need to already have unlocked three technologies. But I could probably do the number 51 dragon, right? Not that I really want it very much, but there we go. We have it unlocked now. Not even exactly sure what it does. I'm lining my own pockets. These are, of course, hideous lies. And look at it this way. With the profits I'm making, I can invest much more. Jobs, jobs, jobs. This is what I say. You guys just need to give me all your money, I and I'll make with jobs. A lot of competitors, but if one person really gets on my nerves, then it's that Beatrix von Pomp. What? what a name! You haven't encountered it yet. Be glad. She takes everyone to the cleaners. Beatrix Von Pomp, you say. Engine shed. Ah, oh, here's our new engine. We can even, like, look at it here. We can whistle. Wow. That is cool looking. Rotate the camera here. I like high detailed resolution here. You can just look at your, your locomotives. Awesome. Rotate locom- Oh, cool. That is so fun. And yeah, you can look at all the trains in the map. Oh, what the heck was that? Number 51 Dragon, friends. That's what that is. That's what that. Let's get out of this. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Let's go take a look at my tips and tricks. I think we're basically done this. I just need to do 18 loads of cattle to Denver. Why isn't that done yet? Cheyenne's nearly at 30,000. 100 passengers from Cheyenne to Rock Springs without stopping. I think I did set that up, right? Yeah, they're out here right now, and they're delivering some passengers, right? Passenger, passenger, four beer and mail. And they should not be stopping as far as I know. Cheyenne all the way out. Can I speed stuff up here? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's take also, if I'm on speed mode and I come look at the train, no, it goes in normal speed. I just get a look at the different kind of terrains and layouts and whatnot. Wow. Imagine being on a train back in this era. Just like sitting here with the wind blowing in your face. You got nothing anywhere but countryside, hills, and like wildlife. Excellent. And bandits. Cheyenne is becoming a major railroad hub, and the credit is all ours. I don't know if it's all ours there, uh, Greedy McPants McGee. Pretty sure, pretty sure some of those jobs weren't created by you lining your pockets. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong though. I don't know, give me all your money and I'll make a job for you to go research it and you can uh, let me know what the results are. But for now, is this gonna pump up here when our passengers get offloaded? You can see them offloading right now. Bam, 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 bam. So what that should do, $19,000. Yeah, we just delivered 37, so I do that two more times. We'll have all our passengers. And we need this uh, loads of cattle to Denver. Oh, uh, we almost got this one here as well. That's coming along. All right, let's just speed up and get on to the next scenario. Ooh, this is cool. 
so many, so many potential cool things you can do. Like you can. These, this is all very simple. What do I'm doing you know right now. That many people call the vast stretch of land between the Mississippi and California the Great American Desert. Those fools. Once my railroad has opened everything up, the value of these lands will go through the roof. Huh. Not sure how I feel about these doofers and their uh, their text. They 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 are they are ac I mean they're they're true. I don't know if they're accurate. They're definitely true. Here comes a bunch more stuff. Great, Cheyenne. How are you doing, friend? Currently thirty three thousand. Wow, you're getting up there. Let's take a look one more time here. One hundred and fifty thousand. We hit that one. It's just this loads of cattle to Denver that's really taking forever. What's the deal with that? Oh, I bet the deal is. I bet the deal is they don't need no more cattle because we're not moving enough meat and leather. Ah, because they're full. Who takes meat and leather? Well, we got meat up here, but they've got plenty. How about leather? Where the heck? Oh, it's wait. 85,000 people to get leather boots? I guess that makes some sense because people are going to have their own shoes. You got that pretty big city to support putting shoes in a train car, like 8 billion of them. But this will happen as well not too long from now. Let's take a look over here at this. Oh, they're moving, they're moving beer. They came all the way over here to Kelly Ranch full of beer. Ah, now I see the problem. So what they're not doing is stocking up on the cattle because they got nothing to do with the beer. Aha, it all makes sense to me now. It all makes sense to me now. We got to do something about this, right? Let's manage this train and figure this out one way or another. Oh, you can see here, uh, their sand is full, their oil is full, their water is down to like 70%. This is their maintenance? Oh, that's another thing. We haven't gotten any maintenance buildings up here, so that's why all these trains are breaking down. Let's build a maintenance building here. So every train that comes through here will get maintained, and we can watch how that works out on this one right here when I go to manage the train. Yeah, okay, that's cool that we can see it coming in. So once it pulls in here, we should see the maintenance come up. Because I just built that maintenance. Yep, there we go. It's going to maintain all the way up. Now, this takes a little bit longer before the train leaves the tracks. But it will leave here uh, in a much better position. It'll be far less likely to break down. Okay. Does every other station have a, uh, have a maintenance? I think I actually have one train out here that probably has never been maintained. Right? No, actually. No, Lee breeding to North Platte doesn't seem... Does indeed seem to be working. I think everything going through Omaha is getting maintained. So, we're okay. We're okay. It's just a matter of all this crazy beer here that we don't really need. Coming down to this location in Denver, where they're not doing anything with it because they're super, super, super full-on beer. 5.2. Yeah, they are, they are drinking quite a lot of beer there. 0.5 in Denver. So there is that. Let's watch the train. Oh, the train's not stopping. Hold on. Maybe that's the problem. Progress is enormous. Bloody hell. The far west is no longer so far away anymore. And the people are slowly realizing that trade helps create prospering cities. We still have a long way to go, but the transcontinental railroad is coming. Did I actually finish everything? Because I don't feel like I finished that last one with the cattle there. In spite of all the challenges, the Union Pacific Railroad managed to cross the endless expanses of the Great Plains and conquer the merciless slopes of the Rocky Mountains. The Central Pacific Railroad approached from the west, but the winter of 1868 brought all work to a standstill. The two lines lay just a few hundred miles across from each other in the middle of nowhere in the mountains. The dream of the first transcontinental railroad seemed to be within touching distance, but was buried by house-high masses of snow and blown away by icy snowstorms, a dream that had begun almost four decades before. All right. Well, there we go. That was episode El Numero Uno, apparently. I am a train manager. How many times did I pause? Zero. And this, I did it by mistake somehow. Time rating, 20 out of 20. Hell yeah. If, oh, I didn't fulfill my last task. That's unfortunate. The game ended before I, I, I could. I'm not quite sure why it ended all of a sudden. I thought I had until 1968. But regardless, initial capital rating, 1. Competitor rating, 1. Map rating, 1.5. Pause mode rating times 0.8. Oh, I see. So it'd be times one if I was using like the tactical one where you can't pause. 
But I didn't actually pause, I don't think. Unless maybe I did, and it reduces my... I did it once or something. Or maybe that maybe opening the menus, it did look like that was pausing automatically there by mistake a few times. Regardless, game mode campaign, region the north. The length of game, one year, nine months. Company value, 2.7 million. Number of rail lines, six. Number of stations, ten. All of this stuff was super, super, super simple, and I barely even scratched the surface of all the cool things there are to do in this game. This, you can do like giant sandboxes in ginormous areas with all kinds of competitors, all kinds of industry, all kinds of like uh, stock market shenanigans and buying out competitors and like vying for resources. Fun times ahead, friends. Fun times ahead. I kind of want to go look at the next chapter, but probably not play it because this episode's already been 65 minutes. Uh, I guess I, I don't think I can get my score up by continuing, but yeah, let's just go look at the next chapter really quick to see what's up. Oh, wait a minute. I got a gold star? Yeah, because I'm the best, right? I, the guy did say in the beginning that I'm better than all the rest, as I recall. Can I continue? Oh, do I have to... Uh, I already did this one. Let's go back here. Let's click on this one. There, the early days. Eight. I see. So before we were over here in 1860. Was that 1863? I thought it was 1830. Oh yeah, it was 1863. So now I'm going back in time to the 1830s, 33 years earlier. This chapter is all about the modest beginnings of the railroad, but how they then quickly revolutionized transportation in the USA, helping to revive the prosperity of the industrial centers on the East Coast. While you're building your first railroad empire and leading your rail tracks further towards the west to the Great Lakes, you will also learn about the economic systems behind railway empire. Philip Evan Thomas, the well-known railroad enthusiast from Baltimore, will be right beside your wait, right by your side, lining his pockets at your expense, creating jobs. Uh, let me come out of here for a minute here. I just want to see very quickly. What if I? What is? I don't necessarily want to do sandbox mode, but I just want to look at it. Northwest, 1830, 1850, 1870. You can do each one of these and get some kind of rating, it looks like. Let's go back a little bit. What is free mode? I guess you can just do whatever whatever you want. Interesting. What is scenarios? That's Oh, are these different from what I was already doing? Yeah, the Northern Passage, 1870, 1910, Rocky Mountain Mining. Interesting. Oh, they have difficulties down there. We got hard over here, medium over there. You can play like no pause. You can play with various numbers of competitors. I can still finish up this campaign. God, there's so many things to do. Like, it's it's fascinating to me how deep they've made this game. Doesn't matter if uh, if you're interested in quick things or long scenarios or challenges or easy mode or you just want to go explore. It's all there for you. It's all better for you. And then at the same time, there's a ton of information, but they make it relatively easily accessible. And there's still so much more to find out. Anyway, that is this game, Railway Empires. It comes out in January, I think, 26th or 28th or thereabouts on Steam. If you want to see more, I'd be happy to play it, but it really comes down to how many people would watch it because I got to keep, uh, keep making the videos... And this could be one of them, or it could not. I could do some other stuff. I don't know. It really all comes down to how many people want to see it. But uh, that's the end of this uh, Let's Try. Now it's time to move on to my fifth Let's Try of the weekend, a Spell Force 3. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Right in the nose. Ah, I can look backwards, I can look on the right, and I can look on the left. It is kind of nice. It's scenic. A little cartoony, but I, I, it's grown on me. I like it a lot. You can just experience the countryside every once in a while. Fun times. Super fun times. I mean, for people who like this kind of stuff. For everyone else, why the hell are you still watching this video?